Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Kova, and welcome back to another daily transfer video. We're smashing these out now. We are on, I think, like, episode 72, which is crazy. It's kind of been a bit of a filler in between, like, the new FIFA as well, so that's not too bad either. And, you know, we're getting close to the end of the transfer window as well, so it should begin to get a lot juicier. And I'm probably going to do a massive episode on the final day. So, without further ado, we're going to start, but before I do... If you're new around here, make sure you do subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, let's try and get 10 likes in this video and hopefully keep that momentum going. So we're going to start off anyway with Tim Krull. This is an interesting one. He's going to go on loan to Ajax. However, he's set to sign a new contract with Newcastle. That's what I'm reading anyway. He's set to sign a new deal with Newcastle and go on a season-long loan to uh, Ajax. Obviously, I'm guessing it's due to a wage restriction type thing at Newcastle. Because obviously when you do go down, you don't have the same budgets for wages and stuff like that because you don't make as much money. So that is probably the case with Tim Kroll. I'm guessing he would have been one of the higher earners at Newcastle. And they're being very, very smart about how they're going about like, you know, trying to get back up Newcastle. A lot like Aston Villa, you know, the two clubs that went down, well, two of them anyway that went down, they've tried to like, you know, basically restructure. You know, Newcastle recently sold Yanmat today. That actually features a little bit later on. I've kind of ruined that one. But, you know, they sold Yanmat and then brought in Yedlin, who's probably going to cost less uh, in terms of wages. And also, he makes them a bit of money. They sold Yanmat for $7 million and got Yedlin for five. So, it's very, very smart play by Newcastle. And it looks like they want to keep hold of Krull, but can't afford to pay his wages. So, that's where Ajax have came in. Next up is Lamina Kone. He's getting linked to Everton, obviously, a lot. But, however, you've know, got a bit of an update. Moyes has rejected an Everton offer for Kone. Not sure what the fee was. I'm guessing it was an undisclosed offer. However, Everton did come in for Kone, and Moyes knocked it back. So, it's a bit of a stalemate between the two. I, I probably see it going to the down to, like, the wire, and Everton will eventually offer, you know, a, a big enough fee for Sunderland to, to basically to have to accept. Next up is Mangala. He looks set to go on loan to Napoli, is what I'm reading. Obviously, that kind of plays into Koulibaly, whether he will leave Napoli or not. You know, if Napoli are going for a centre-back, and they're going for a loan, which is kind of a quick fix, you know, Mangala's a really good centre-back for starters, but, you know, kind of says, is Koulibaly leaving? From what I'm reading, they're going to offer him a new contract and try and keep him at the club with a 60 million release fee. However, you know, a lot of clubs will sign a player beforehand, before one leaves, so I can I kind of see Koulibaly leaving now if Napoli do uh, are actually you know in turn going for Mangala. Next up is Jan Match. This just like you know an update. He has completed a move to Watford. He is now officially a Watford player. I don't think he's that good of a player. You know, judging on last season, I think he was pretty horrific for Newcastle. Really good going forward, but defensively he's horrible. He reminds me a lot like Moreno. You can tell he's a really good player going forward. However, he just didn't seem to have that defensive capabilities. However, you know, for £7 million, he's got that experience in the Premier League. It could turn out to be a good sign. He might have just played bad for Newcastle and end up going to Watford and being a great signing. Next up is Ryan Mason. He could be on his way to Hull. Uh, you know, they are set to go in for him. And likely to cost around £8 to £10 million. Pounds. I think it's that... I think what I'm reading that the deal will cost eight million to begin with, with possibly rising to ten. Next up is a player who is a done deal, and that is Vertuti is less Aston Villa. Didn't really feature at all playing for Aston Villa, you know, wasn't really in the first team that much. And he has gone to Saint Etienne. That is a confirmed deal. I think he signed a three year deal with them. Musa Soko, this big one. He is attracting interest from Tottenham. And they're probably going to offer Bentaleb plus, plus cash. Bentaleb's been told he can leave Tottenham with Schalke have been interested. I'm not sure if Schalke are going to get him or not. But they are interested in Sissoko as well, interestingly enough, Tottenham. And I say they may offer Bentaleb plus cash. They may just offer cash. You know, Tottenham haven't really spent that much in this transfer window. Next up is just that confirmation of Yedlin going to Newcastle as a confirmed deal. I think he'll do quite well for Newcastle. He's a really pacey player. And... To be honest, he didn't do that bad for Sunderland. Sam Allardyce was a big fan, so it could end up being a good bit of business. I think he's a really good bit of business anyway by Newcastle to try and, you know, cut the wage bill, as we mentioned before. Next up is Henry Save, another player who is a done deal. He's left Newcastle and joined St. Etienne on a season-long loan. Again, another bit of smart play by Newcastle. Could probably get one of the higher earners off the wage bill. Nicholas Bentner may be returning to English football. That is a big one as well. It seems to put it as the headline. In fact, I might do, you know, depending on when this video goes live. But yeah, Bentner is interesting QPR. They're going to go for the main man after his Wolfberg release. So, you know, I'm, you know what? He's that good. I'm going to put it as the title anyway when you're seeing this. Next up is Callan Haglu. He is interesting uh, Tottenham. 
obviously they kind of need another attacking midfielder to, to kind of push Ericsson on a bit more. Ericsson pretty much has free reign of that attacking midfielder position, and Hakan Kalanoglu is interesting. Uh, Tottenham. Mika Richards, however, is interesting. Uh, Sunderland. Is it Sunderland? No, sorry, Hull. <laughs> Hull, yeah, Hull are interested in Micah Richards, sorry, I read that wrong, and uh, Mike Feel in the stand-in, Hull, Hull manager is interested in getting Micah Richards, I think he'd probably partner with either Dawson or Curtis Davies, it'd be a good, I think it'd be a good sign, and you know, Micah Richards is a good player when he gets going, he was a really, really, really good player for Manchester City when he first came through, but just, he wrecked his own career by staying there, basically. And finally, we have on Manola, he could be another centre-back option for Arsenal, after, you know, I said, I think it's done an update yesterday and Mustafi saying now they are not selling them. Valencia are not interested in selling them, so they may go it back in for Manolas. I previously done a video where Arsenal were interested in him. So that's how it looks, guys. You know, a really interesting bunch of transfers could possibly going on. Mangala the Beast going to Serie A. Obviously, I'm talking Beast in terms of FIFA perspective. Uh, really smart play by Newcastle, Krull and Xavier going off their wage bill and possibility of the Lord, the legend himself, Nicholas Bentner returning to English football. So guys, as I mentioned before, let's try and get 10 likes in this video and I shall see you tomorrow for more Transfer Gossip.